obviously pretty stunned to see the uh, amount of people that are here today. And uh, I think it's because, uh, you know, this is an exciting time not only to be in IT, to be a decision maker in IT, uh, but to be a part of an industry right now that is changing faster than anything else on the planet. And, uh, you know, I was watching Jim Cramer last night, getting a little Jim Cramer uh, tidbits on how to handle a uh, group, but I don't think Jim Cramer ever has this many uh, power players on one call. I can tell you that right now. So Jim Cramer, eat your heart out. Um, I have got some massively impactful people. Uh, I am super honored to have all of you guys on here joining me at the Avant Battle Lab. And uh, we're pumped. Today we're going to try to cover more information in one hour than I think most people have ever seen in their lives. Um, we're going to be doing a, a great, uh, you know, chat at the end. Uh, the end of this will be a kind of open chat. So if we go over an hour and anyone wants to hang on uh, and ask questions, feel free. We can do that. Um, but I'm going to kind of get us started. My name is Drew Lidecker. I am president and co-founder of Avant, and uh, I am here in Chicago in our headquarters uh, in our battle lab. And I have an amazing uh, guest today, and I've got my entire team behind us, hopefully uh, keeping me from having any technical issues today, which will be a miracle uh, with this many people. And, uh, but it, it's so far so good. So uh, today we are thrilled to have uh, this esteemed panel of Matt Carter, Shlomo Kramer, Bob Victor, James Parker, and Kumar. Uh, some of my good friends and amazing partners, and we're going to get after it today on uh, this one panel talking about SD-WAN and how disruptive the technology. I'm going to kind of get it kicked off a little bit, uh, just kind of talking about the state of industry, uh, what's happening in IT, and uh, talk about the excitement around SD-WAN in general. Um, and so to kind of get things started, uh, if anybody has ever seen me speak publicly, I talk uh, specifically about the rate of change. I've been in IT since I graduated college, uh, which to some of you, you might think is only a couple years ago, um, but it really wasn't. It was actually quite some time ago, and I've been through uh, various big carriers. I've been in the telecommunications industry. I've been in the VAR side, uh, and now obviously uh, running Avant. Uh, so I've seen a lot, uh, as has all my panelists today uh, that are on here. But I think everyone on here could agree the only constant is change, and the rate of change is increasing. Uh, and there's no more evidence than in IT today. Uh, you know, what the traditional 10-year playbook that most IT staffs have been running, uh, I like to say if you're running the same 10-year playbook, you're probably terminally ill and you don't even know it. Uh, with technology moving so fast today, it takes new providers, new ways of looking at things, and and this, this call, this, this webinar is really powered by our trusted advisor movement, which is uh, absolutely instrumental today uh, in helping IT staff navigate the confusion that disruption is giving everyone. And so even the way that you procure today is changing, right? Uh, but it's not the strongest of species that survives, really. It's the ones that adapt to change. I love this quote, right? The ones that adapt to change are the ones that are the most successful. And uh, we see that time and time again. Ten years ago when we started Avant to today, it's unbelievable the difference in not only providers, who's here, who's gone, uh, but the technologies that we're all willing to accept. And, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about this speech last night, and I was thinking about how, you know, when I was at a big carrier, I was always scared that you should buy every single thing from me everything because you might get fired and you know how funny the world has changed because if you buy absolutely everything from one single provider you're probably going to get fired and i think that's just kind of a little bit of humor because the it staffs today are more willing to buy from companies they've never ever heard of before that are laser focused on one to two to three things and do it better than anyone else on the planet and SD-WAN, let me tell you, is a box of chocolates. Every single one of these providers is completely different from the other. Uh, there's a various ways of doing it today. Uh, and so today we're going to kind of demystify that for you as we continue to keep going through. And one of the things that we like to talk about today in IT and in change, right, is that if you're not evolving, you're dying. And, you know, we love to just to point out the obvious, right? I mean, we use Blockbuster. I feel bad for Blockbuster. <laughs> 
uh, poor Jim, he's been used on more of my slide decks than anybody on the planet. But, you know, this is 24 months before Blockbuster uh, literally was bye bye uh, They were digitold, right? They were digitold by Netflix. Uh, today is your last day. Today there's only one Blockbuster, right? And now you look at Netflix today, uh, you know, half the Golden Globes was congratulating Netflix, right? Who would have ever thought that even years ago? Uh, consuming over 30% of internet traffic on a daily basis. Uh, that's the essence of disruption. Uh, it's also the essence of being digitold. And a lot of the S&P 500 today are being digitold. Bye-bye. Uh, you know, there are going to be names on the S&P 500 that you've never heard of before, uh, and they're going to be there sooner than later. Uh, and it's all because of disruption, people that are evolving, taking advantage of technology, and moving forward. And what we'd like to think to do is a trusted advisor, we're, we power the trusted advisor movement. And we think that there is no better individuals, companies on the planet than the trusted advisor movement to help keep companies from ever going bye-bye. I mean, even Jeff said it, right? In 30 years, not 100, uh, we could be gone uh, if we're not evolving. And so what we like to say is don't ever be digitold, right? How many of us on this call today have a Nokia phone? I would imagine it's probably less than five of the thousand people that are on this call right now. Um, and so these are just some examples of digitold companies that didn't evolve fast enough or are trying to evolve now uh, into the state. And we really believe that this is SD-WAN's key fun functionality is the ability to help the world at layer seven move in a way that you could never do before. And so what Avon is doing is we're giving you insights that you don't see anywhere else, from Gartner, from Forrester to IDC, you name it. We're in the trenches day in and day out. We're seeing what's working, what's not, uh, and it's happening in real time, not in a book report that was written a year ago. And so we came out with our uh, state of disruption report this year, and both of these reports, by the way, your trusted advisor will send everyone on this call a link to be able to download both reports. Uh, but we had our state of disruption, our inaugural one, 2019 this year, with hundreds of CIOs ranging from 100 million to 15 billion in revenue, uh, talking about what's the most disruptive technology and what are they going to do in the next 12 months. And today we picked SD-WAN because uh, the CIOs that responded to the state of disruption report named SD-WAN number one most disruptive technology on top of mind uh, for each and every one of them. And so. We're going to be coming out quarterly with a 6-12 report. What is going to happen in the next 6 to 12 months? Uh, and that's how fast this market is moving. And so we came out with our first inaugural 6-12 report, uh, which is SD-WAN, which will be uh, what we'll be talking about today. Uh, our security report will be coming out uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so your trusted advisors will be able to get you that report, and that will actually be uh, our next CIO briefing that we'll be doing. Um, but in our state of disruption report, uh, we coined the rate of disruption index, the RDI. And 13% uh, was a massive rate of disruption index. And I won't go into how the math works on that. You can download the report and check it out. But that was number one most disruptive technology in the state of disruption report. Uh, as a matter of fact, it actually outpaced Unified Communications, UCAS, which is the huge buzzword, and it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're going to be going to that technology as well uh, as number two. So it was a real shocker, uh, but it is top of mind with everybody. Hence the reason why we've got this massive uh, ecosystem of CIOs today on this call. And the market is absolutely growing. In 2017, it was a blip on the radar, but everybody was talking about it, right? Um, and the CAGR rate is something we've never seen before. It's absolutely massive. And so that is why we wanted to put the focus on today. We wanted to demystify. You can send in questions today. We'll try to get to as many as possible. It will probably be towards the end. Uh, but we're going to be talking about this explosive market that's happening today. And it's changing everything. I mean, you know, the one thing that we like to talk about is, uh, you know, even Cisco just got involved, right? Cisco did not want to see the SD-WAN market going by them. They had some uh, start sales, uh, and they ended up having to make a purchase out there uh, to bring in that technology. Um, but they saw a lot of their business potentially going away, right? And 
it's that disruptive nature of this industry right now of companies coming out of nowhere, companies you've never heard of before that are laser focused on this technology doing incredible things. And you can see by 2023, 90% SD-WAN and virtual CPE. So it is coming. Uh, and it's coming very, very fast. As a matter of fact, I would say the large enterprise uh, is what we're seeing the biggest adoptive rate right now. Uh, and we saw that in a 10-year life cycle across unified communications. So, uh, and disruptors are all around us, right? Oracle uh, just came in and bought Tulare. Uh, VM bought Velo. Cisco bought Viptela. Uh, we definitely think there'll be probably more consolidation, and there'll be probably more companies we've never heard of uh, before that'll be entering the market sooner than later. And so, we're going to get it kicked off uh, with my first guest, Kumar. Uh, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. We've got about seven minutes. I've got a couple questions for you myself, but I'd love to kick it off with Kumar from Versa, and uh, I'll hand the mic over to you, bud. Uh, yeah, thank you, Andrew. Uh, hi, I'm Kumar. I am a co-founder and chief development officer of Versa. Good morning. Uh, Versa has two types of solutions for different market needs available through Avant. The first solution is cloud-delivered SD-WAN and security solution that is consumed as a managed or a DIY and is offered through strategic partners like Comcast. This comprehensive and flexible solution helps enterprise address the most complex WAN topologies and drive and diverse security needs. The second solution, which is Versa Titan. Versa Titan is intended to be simple and more easily consumed for the mass market within the enterprise. Titan is cloud managed offer and easiest and is the easiest SD-WAN solution deployed across the industry. This solution is targeted at businesses with lean IT budgets, allowing them to rapidly adopt new technologies to transform the overall wide area network. Next slide. Versa Networks takes pride of being leader in networking and security. Versa was rated as visionary in Gartner Magic Quadrant for the Van Edge. Uh, Gartner also rated Versa as top three in every use case identified by them. Additionally, Gartner rated Versa as number one in SD-WAN critical capabilities. Versa is the only NSS recommended security enabled SD-WAN supplier for Avant. NSS has recommended Versa not only for next-gen firewall, but also for IPS, uh, IPS and uh, security-enabled SD-WAN. And lastly, uh, Versa solution offers robust SD-WAN and security capabilities to help customers to be in excellent position for migration to the cloud and SaaS-based offerings. Next slide. So, what are the benefits of Versa Titan has? Versa Sol Titan solution gives you up to 50% cost savings when you compare with other solutions adopting multi-vendor approach. Versa Titan embeds security natively uh, because we recognize that customers deploying local breakouts uh, to attach to their cloud-based applications need that security. For simplicity, uh, Versa as uh, Titan SD-WAN can be enabled from the palm of your hand we have made Versa Titan simple and intuitive uh, for, and for helping customers operationalize from activation to troubleshooting from the smartphone itself. From a reliability perspective, for unified communication as well as SaaS providers, we've embedded a variety of features to ensure the best path capability and application optimization for excellent customer experience for voice, video, and cloud. Kumar, from you know, I had a perspective, I got a couple quick things I wanted to kind of inject because, um, sure. you know, from the sounds of it, I wasn't sure if you started your career in sales or in engineering, and that's kind of a that's kind of a funny joke. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Versa is one of the best SD WAN providers on the planet. Let's be honest. Traditionally, uh, a company that went with the carriers, you're going to hear about Comcast model. Why? Because it's tried, true, and tested. And I really want you to talk about the NSS. Um, and the recommendation from them. But what I really want our audience to understand is, you know, Versa's got a classic product that's been around for a very long time. It's complex, it's unbelievable, it, it's tried, true, and tested, it's been around, it's proven, right? But Titan 
Titan, for everybody that's watching right now, Titan is like your Sonos at home, right? The ability to set things up super quickly, to deploy unbelievably fast. So I just want to make sure that as Kumar goes through this, that I point out those two things for you. And if you could, talk about the NSS recommendation as well, Kumar. Uh, sure, uh, Drew. Uh, so as you know, NSS Labs in Austin is a reputable independent organization that provides validation testing for different uh, technologies, including security. NSS will perform rigorous and comprehensive evaluation with extensive reporting regarding your security capabilities uh, uh, as, uh, you know, going as, as, as long as last 10 years. As the customer tr uh, transforms wide area networks uh, deploying internet connectivity with local internet breakout, uh, security becomes a natural part of uh, the transformation and your conversation. You know, validation, validated testing for security provides customers the confidence uh, they are looking for when they buy security in combination with SD-WAN. Drew. I appreciate that. Now, and I, I, wanted to, I wanted you to point that out just because we feel like today is going to be a big theme around security. So. Yeah, sure. Uh, and actually, Drew, to be honest with you, today nobody buys SD-WAN without security, uh, and security is, is an important part of conversation when you, when you sell SD-WAN. Uh, so, you know, here is an example of what we have made in Titan. We have made a very easy and intuitive uh, interface for delivering SD-WAN cloud uh, services and security for your WAN network. Customer can configure, activate, uh, monitor, and troubleshoot all from the palm of their hand using their smartphone. This is literally SD-WAN uh, in the palm of your hand, making it fast and easy to operate entire WAN network. Can you imagine that, Drew? I, I actually can, because we're having a tremendous amount of success with it. I've seen it deployed. It's incredible. Uh, even I can deploy it, uh, which is incredible as well. But, and I want to just point out something real quick. It, this isn't just for like a five site. This could be for a hundred sites. This could be for a couple hundred sites. Am I correct in saying that? Uh, precisely, Drew. Uh, actually, Versa Titan is focused towards uh, companies uh, with lean IT budgets, and we've got customers doing ranging from two sites to 300. So before you wrap up with the, the remaining time you have, can you expand on both the security features and analytics that, that can deliver on Titan? Uh, sure. Uh, so first of all, uh, you know, uh, from a perspective of uh, security features, uh, we have uh, uh, not only uh, advanced, uh, uh, you know, uh, security features like next-gen firewall, unified threat management, IPS, IDS, DNS security, and all these uh, security feature sets are needed uh, because uh, when you when you attach to, when the customers deploy direct to internet access and they attach to the cloud application, they really need a very robust security on the premise. Uh, and that is why uh, security is very important. As far as, uh, as, far as uh, the traffic steering path is concerned, uh, our solution recognizes application signature that, uh, and also has advanced SD-WAN capabilities such as MOS-based traffic steering, forward error correction, and traffic replication for end-to-end -end path re recovery and application experience. This is very important for unified communication as well as cloud uh, as, as well as cloud-based services. Lastly, uh, for this particular uh, slide, you know, Versa uh, Titan delivers simplicity for networking and security. Versa Titan really removes the hard associated with networking and security. We are an advanced networking and security provider offering advanced security as well as LAN services, SD-WAN, and routing. Versa Titan simplifies and removes the hard in networking and security. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Kumar. I appreciate it. And uh, I, I cannot uh, stress enough for everybody listening today to get with your trusted advisor to learn more about this product. Uh, the success is getting uh, tremendous here. The buildup, uh, the, the, simpl the simplicity of the product is amazing. It's something that we haven't really seen. Uh, this is what we are seeing, though. Uh, we're seeing a blend, right, from fully managed to co-managed, I would say that's the majority of everything that we're seeing currently today. Uh, and then do it yourself is a, a smaller percentage. And I would, I would actually think the co-managed and managed is growing far faster than we're seeing do it yourself. And, and I think that's because, and I would love the, the panelists too to talk about this, 
in particular because I know a lot of you guys from a managed perspective and a co-manager are excelling. Uh, a lot of that is because it's not as easy as everybody thought, and that's why Kumar came out with Titan, right? I mean, the classic is incredibly complex and robust, and Titan is uh, un incredibly simple to roll out. And I think that that was the misnomer of SD-WAN in the beginning, that it's just plug and play and just plug it in, and it's just going to work and solve all your problems at Layer 7. And that's not even close to the – it is true it's going to solve a lot of your problems, but that's why we're seeing so much of the managed space. And so next up with that, Bob, I'd love to have a quick intro. I know you've got some great slides that you wanted to go over as well. Uh, go ahead, Bob, and we'll, uh, we'll start off with you. Bob, you're on mute, bud. Yeah, how's that? Thanks, thanks uh, Drew. So it's Much Bob better. Victor. Thank you. I, uh, I head product at Comcast Business. And it's great to follow Kumar. You know, we uh, at Comcast Business have our active core product, and that's powered by Versa. And for sure, Versa is the best SD-WAN platform out there, which is why we chose it. So what I wanted to perhaps start off with is what are we hearing from customers, and why are customers adopting SD-WAN? And what we found really is there are four reasons. And, and the first two really are the primary reasons, which are one, QoS and network segmentation. As applications and bandwidth and, and multiple networks become more important at the customer site, there's a real need to deliver differentiated QoS uh, in those various networks and, you know, and, and great performance across the various networks. Part and parcel to that is centralized management and visibility. Once customers have more than one site, they want to be able to see their whole network in one place. Uh, and then the, the two other reasons, Kumar mentioned security, and we can talk more about security, but security always comes up. Uh, and then finally, total cost of ownership. And I think we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about total cost of ownership as well. Yeah, actually, Bob, I want to kind of talk about that too from a, a total – do you think everybody is seeing the total cost of ownership or totally understanding total cost of ownership of moving over to SD-WAN? You, you know, it's interesting. Customers start out that way, but I think what I would say is um, – no one's costs go down. You know, what, what total cost of ownership means and what SD-WAN allows is for you to basically increase bandwidth without increasing senior technical IT support. So I think customers have a good sense of what their budgets are, and they can't really drive up their budgets dramatically. But everyone needs more bandwidth, and very few companies can, can afford to add more, high, more highly qualified IT staff. And so what SD-WAN allows you to do is to replace out legacy hardware, legacy networks with next generation IP connectivity and next generation networking. And, you know, again, as Kumar mentioned and his course is important to us, just the simplicity of providing the SD-WAN allows your existing IT staffs to do more. So that's how we think about uh, total cost of ownership, Drew. You know, and as you go through this, too, I would love for you just to, you know, I, when I think of Comcast, I think of unbelievably fast internet. I think of a massive disruptor coming into the business market. Uh, I think of uh, what the carriers must think about you. Uh, and you're picking the next generation technology, and you're coming in as a start. But I just want you at some point today to also let everybody know, uh, how are you handling everybody nationwide, too? Because a lot of the networks that we're seeing are nationwide. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I think you characterized us very, very well. We were fortunate to be born late, you know, so, you know, we, we missed really the whole legacy networking, and we can start from an unconflicted position since we're really not tied to legacy bandwidth or legacy networks. Uh, but, but why don't I, as we think of active core, and, and I'll pick up on your question, there's basically a movement from what we call racks to apps. It used to be the case that companies had, you know, separate hardware-based solutions for routers, Wi-Fi, firewall, comms. And what we're seeing is now with the SD-WAN platform, we can virtualize all of those network, key network functions. And again, customers primarily today want, want software-defined wide area networking and they want security. But we know they will want more features and functionality and, and the basic platform allows them to do this. So it allows them to scale uh, as they grow their business and retire legacy systems. In terms of nationwide, historically, we've operated within our footprint. Uh, about three or four years ago, uh, we started a, a part of Comcast to serve 
the, the largest 1,300 companies nationwide. And, and so to do that, we form partnerships with the other cable companies, uh, with the legacy telcos to deliver uh, a managed broadband solution that is on net uh, and also off net outside of our footprint. We, we really serve those enterprise customers holistically nationwide. And in the mid-market, uh, we serve mid-market customers, primarily those that are based in our footprint, but if they have sites off footprint or off our network, we have an all we have a whole access department that uh, maintains those partnerships with other cable companies and telcos. Hey Bob, real quick, we got a, a bunch of questions coming in for you, but don't you think that all of the one solution, uh, an all-in-one solution, saves money versus point solutions for routing, firewall, and acceleration? It, it does, but even even what um, the all-in-one solution allows you to do is use third parties. So instead of having, say, a traditional Palo Alto or Fortinet hardware-based solution, we can virtualize that so you don't need a separate piece of hardware and offer that on the platform. It, now, today, very few companies are actually doing that, and most of the har traditional hardware vendors are moving slowly into that space. But they all see where the world's going, and they all see the benefit of having kind of centralized control for all, for all the networking, and they, they are racing and very supportive in moving to that environment. Yeah, you know, I, and I would say to that question, too, uh, who asked that, um, we are always seeing a tremendous reduction in cost moving to SD-WAN, but we say don't focus on that uh, because there's so many different ways to look at it. Yes, can we just straight up save you money? Absolutely, we can probably save you money compared to private networking or something else and, and point solutions all over. Um, but we're also saying make sure that you look at it in a different way as opposed to just coming in every single time, and I think Bobby would agree with that, of just about cost cutting, right? It's about adding more. It's about becoming a different type of network for your company. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you think about the trends, everyone needs more and more bandwidth, and you've got to fund that somehow. And also security is becoming more and more, it's more and more of a critical issue at, at every company's board level, and that also needs to be funded. And the price of IT staff is not going down, and so there's really, there's really a need to become more efficient. And so I think it's really a question of how do you, do, how do you get more out of the resources that you have as opposed to cost-cutting. Couldn't agree more, and I, I'd love for you to just kind of finish up on this last slide, but I would say, too, you know, th to that point where you said l do less with more, uh, you know, or more with less, uh, this is the single greatest tool I've ever seen that allows you to do that. I mean, you know, in terms of the visibility, the world is at Layer 7, SD-WAN makes applications dance, right? You've never had anything like this, and it's only been around for a very short amount of time. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's been transformational for our enterprise networking business. And, you know, I think just given the number of participants on this, uh, on this webinar, it, it is the one topic that all CIOs are talking about. And so, you know, the last slide we would say is, well, why active core from Comcast business? Four reasons. You know, we have the best assets in the last mile. So in terms of last mile, we used to live in a T1 world, you know, which is, you know, one, meg, you know, one, one, in a, one in change megabits per second. And now on our coax network, we and our other cable companies can deliver a gig uh, just about anywhere in the country. We also have a fantastic partnership with Versa, and so we think we both have the best connectivity and the best SD-WAN platform. We've invested heavily in a digital experience platform, and I'd encourage you all just to Google Active Core Comcast Business, download our Active Core app. You can try it today on your iOS or Android device or play around with our portal online. Uh, we think that's, you know, that's core to the proposition. I don't need to say more about the total cost of ownership. Uh, and in terms of unconflicted and agnostic, you know, really we have as Comcast, you know, no legacy business to protect. And we really want to do what's right by our customers. Some customers want to move everything at once. Other customers want to transition off legacy hardware or legacy MPLS uh, networks, and we want to support them in that. So thanks very much, Drew, and for everyone that's joined the, uh, uh, today's session. We had a lot more questions. We'll try to get to them for Bob uh, towards the end. But, uh, you know, it's funny, Bob, too, you know, and for everybody on here, uh, you know, especially uh, my next guest, uh, Matt. But, uh, you know, the days of the MPLS days, right? Remember those days? Uh, and I'm, by the way, not saying <coughs> MPLS is dead at all, although I think Matt would probably argue with me in some cases. Um, but I will tell you that um, 
do you remember those MPLS days? You could never try it before you buy it. And I think what you just heard from Bob uh, was that you can absolutely do that. As a matter of fact, you can do that with all of these folks today. Uh, and I think that's one of not only the best things about cloud today is that you can see if it's a fit before you even go into it, right? And so uh, I stress everybody listening to do just that. And listen, the use of broadband, you just saw that, is going up. Uh, to Bob's point, broadband is going through the, the, the roof because of the public Internet. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the one thing that we will say is that globally that's not the case, not even close to the case. As a matter of fact, uh, globally you will need something completely different in, in a lot of cases. Uh, we are uh, global in nature, and about, I would say, almost 60% of our deals are global in nature. So uh, without further ado, Matt Carter, uh, with one of the greatest New England accents on the planet, uh, reminds me of home. Uh, Matt, want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Carter, CEO of Ariaka. Thanks for having me today. So, you know, I'm not going to, you know, speak to the slides. I'll just sort of talk about um, what makes Ariaka different, better, special. Uh, we're very unique in the space that we compete in. I tell my team often that we're the best kept secret out there. Not only, not only are we a, a, a network that was architect for the cloud, but we extend beyond the cloud and helping customers to accelerate their digital transformation um, very quickly. We provide all their connectivity needs, whether it's last mile, regional, I mean global. Of course, we're known for global, but we provide regional and we also provide last mile. And we also do a lot of work around managing um, security and firewalls. And we can do all of that under a consistent global SLA um, for, for our customers. <clears throat> so Ariaka is really just in a great position to solve a lot of our customers' problems. And we can deploy this stuff really very fast, you know, in a matter of days. You know, Drew, you were talking about MPLS. You know, you have to sort of buy it before you try it. And it takes a long time to deploy it. With us, it's just a matter of days and you're up and running and accelerating your digital transformation. So for us, it's really been about helping our customers understanding their business problems. We come at this from the point of view of understanding the, the challenges and the business issues that CIOs are faced with. Yes, there are going to be a lot of us who will walk through the door and we'll offer our flavor of SD-WAN or, or WAN type services. But what's really important is really understanding the business problem that CIOs are, are challenged with, and how do we, with our platform, help to resolve those business problems that they're faced with? And the thing about us, we're kind of the best of both worlds. If you are a, a um, MPLS shop and you're looking to extend and add SD-WAN, we can provide that. And what makes us so unique and different, we're a managed service provider. We're not just a box player. We can manage all of this for you, again, under a consistent um, SLA. The other thing that's also important as these transformations are taking place with companies, you know, what people really want to understand as well, customers, is that do you have a customer support function that's 24 seven, that's timely, reliable, and that can resolve their issues um, very quickly. And when we look at our NPS scores, unlike the traditional providers, our NPS scores of 65, and above, which says to us, this is really important to our customers, the ability to have support that addresses their issues um, in a timely manner. So our Ariaka, I say to the team all the time, we're the best kept secret out there, but those who know us, love us. And the good thing about us is, is that we continue to see the adoption of our platform around the globe. And, and you know, Matt, I wanna, I wanna kind of stop. I love a couple things. One, I'm gonna first point out um, from, you know, a layer seven perspective, right? What we say here at Avant, uh, SD-WAN makes layer seven dance. And we all know that every single company today, the majority of those applications that you have do not live inside of your four walls anymore. They live someplace else. Um, and, you know, I always think like, when you, uh, there's a couple points I want to bring up, but like when I think of SAP in China and I think of SAP running in Europe and the United States, um, you know, the first word sometimes out of my mouth is Ariaka. Have you looked at Ariaka yet? Um, and people are like, well, what's that really going to do? And I, I want everybody on here, I want you to answer that for me, but I also want everybody listening today to understand how different everybody is. 
And what I mean by that is Ariac is a massive layer two, you know, provider giving you a super highway for your layer seven that doesn't live inside of your four walls. And that's giving you a performance enhancement that you can't find anywhere else. So if you could, can you talk a little bit about what I meant by that and, and also the difference with you with having the network that you do? Yeah, so we're obviously known as a, a being able to solve your most um, complex global needs. So if you're, if, you're, if you're an enterprise looking to have connectivity in China, Africa, and far, far away places, who are you going to call? Not Ghostbusters, you're going to call Ariaka. We can solve that issue, you know, for you. But the other part is, is that, you know, people don't realize, so too, we provide regional um, as well. And so we, 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 we add more than just global. If you're an enterprise that's looking for both regional, last mile, and global, we're kind of a one-stop shop that can provide that connectivity for you um, around, around, around the globe. And yes, our global, our global solution is, you know, better, is second to none um, out in the marketplace. And people do come for us to solve that particular issue. We enhance the end user experience by the network and the service nodes that we have um, around the world. But we can also offer you all the other component parts, regional, um, last mile, to give you the most enhanced, you know, end user experience um, than anybody else out there. You know, I know you, you've been, you know, I, I won't say that you've been around forever, but you've been around I have for been, a long time. I feel it every morning. <laughs> uh, you have for a long time. Not only do you have my East Coast accent, but uh, you also have a good background here in Chicago, but you've led a lot of great companies. Uh, and I think you probably uh, fully agree with me, the rate of change in companies today and the rate of change is happening faster and faster. And, and one of the trends and why a lot of the folks are joining today and learning about all of you guys uh, is because some of them have never even heard of you before, right? None of these companies. Some of, you know, they're not household names, and that's a great thing. And you touched on something, and it's Net Promoter Score. I think, um, you know, that's the big difference that a lot of people don't understand is that everybody on uh, this panel today has an unbelievable Net Promoter Score as opposed to probably your incumbent provider. Talk a little bit about that and what you guys are doing, because I, I don't think we stress enough. We could talk about the technology, too, or blue in the face, but the white glove, the managed approach, the knock abilities, the things that customers or massive carriers can't do on their own. Yeah, so that's really important, Drew. So for us, we live and breathe you know, every single customer, whether you're a two-site customer or a 500-plus site um, customer. Our whole DNA is to be really um, customer-centric. Every customer has uh, my telephone number. Every customer has the, the, the contact information of our, my entire senior team. And so we're unlike the carriers where, you know, they have hundreds and thousands of customers. You're just one of many, you know, for, for us, it's critically important that every single customer feels like they're getting a personalized service um, from Ariaka. And we believe that's one of the differentiating attributes that we bring to the party, that we actually do care, that we actually are sitting down with you and working with you and trying to help you solve your business problems. You know, the technology piece is one piece, you know, we'll you know, get that piece done, but what you really have to think through, and I, I wrote this up the other day, the emotional intelligence part is really actually critical. Think about a CIO, he or she is sitting there, they have all these various constituencies around, around the company, around the globe, who all have certain needs and that it's your job to figure out how to provide those needs, solve those needs in a reliable, consistent way. If you mess up, it could be the end of your career with that company. So there's a little bit of angst and tension. And what they want to know is that the person across the table is actually, you know, a partner that we actually care. So all of this is really important. And it gets attributed into our NPS scores in terms of how we approach customers and helping to solve their issues. I love that. You know, and that thank, thank you for ending on that too, because that's such an unbelievably important point for everybody to be listening to right here. It's like when I go home and my internet's slow and my Sonos doesn't work and my cable doesn't work and my TV doesn't work, I throw a fit, but I have like literally no control over it, right? Uh, why? Because all of those services don't live inside of my four walls at home, right? Uh, I think every IT staff today is sometimes put in a penalty box because a layer seven application isn't performing well. 
and you don't have visibility. You don't have you know, a partner there, similar to what Matt was saying, helping you in that situation. Because those layer sevens are mission critical. You know, Office 365 mission critical, SAP mission critical, right? We can go on and on and on. Um, but that is why the CAGR rate of this industry is absolutely exploding today. Now, I want to start off by saying MPLS is absolutely not dead, although uh, maybe Shlomo and Matt would probably argue with me a little bit on that. Um, but the bottom line is it's not, right? And as our stated disruption report uh, clearly indicates, as a matter of fact, the billion dollar and up uh, enterprise uh, customers are increasing their spend of MPLS. And, you know, no better to talk to than James Parker uh, up next about that because uh, one of our greatest partners that we've had for a very, very long time who completely disrupted the MPLS game to begin with, uh, but then also has been doing, in my opinion, SD-WAN uh, since it was SD-WAN, uh, and is also a laser-focused net promoter score company can talk to. And James, one of the things before we even get going too that I haven't been able to jump in on yet, but I also will say the single greatest transition technology on the planet is SD-WAN. You know, uh, I think even Matt talked a little bit about it, Bob talked a little bit about it, Kumar talked. You do not have to rip and replace the entire thing. Remember those days? right? Rip and replace your MPLS network and bring in a new one and hope for the best? Uh, no, you can start with mission critical. You can start with small sites. So anyways, uh, without further ado, uh, James, if you would introduce yourself and tell me when you'd like to continue to keep moving on on the slide side. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Rue. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the, uh, the prior speakers. Really uh, insightful commentary there as well. Um, one of the things I'll just start out with, uh, with Macergy, and we're in our 20th anniversary year as a company. And when you look at our history, we pioneered software-defined networking. And we built out an incredible core platform that really provides a lot of control and automation uh, for our customers. And that, that next wave that came through, as we're all talking about, is SD-WAN. And our implementation certainly of SD-WAN with our partners Fortinet and Silver Peak. This is embedded into our into our network, into that core software-defined uh, platform, and then we're software-defined at the edge. And we round out our broader offering with unified communications and, and, and uh, contact uh, services or call center services to give that voice experience in the cloud. And then that is then wrapped around uh, security as well. And so we have a full suite of offerings that's really accelerating on both fronts, on the UC front, the CCAS front, all driven off of, uh, I would say, the SD-WAN conversations that we're having with our customers. And what I would just come back to that point uh, that you made, Drew, around that MPLS uh, in one dimension is not dead. And you know, the core point of this is that the transport is chosen by the application and the application capability over you know, the transport. And so when we look at many enterprises, they're gonna be in this hybrid world. They have these legacy applications that will not perform within a private or DIA uh, broadband public cloud environment, and it's gonna require that MPLS. And so for all the, you know, the CIOs that are on the call here today, you're working through, okay, well, how do I navigate that mixed environment, the hybrid environment, I want to take advantage of the SD-WAN and its capabilities that's going to provide, but I still got to have this MPLS network. And certainly Macergy is right at the core of being able to manage that, that legacy environment, also then leveraging SD-WAN and bringing that together in a very effective way, and then de-risk that migration to that platform. Uh, and so where we can really work through, you know, really the application strategy over a, you know, a period of time to help our customers migrate within the corresponding uh, infrastructure, network inf infrastructure that will enable that digital transformation. And so we see that the combination of, of those two together in a hybrid world is absolutely um, what we see within our enterprise customers, the, the plans that they need to have and the providers uh, that they're looking for that can enable that transformation. Are you still are you still there, Drew? Yeah, 
We have uh, Drew. I don't think we can hear you. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Sorry. Yeah, gotcha. It, it, it took one plug for somebody who was about to lose a laptop to uh, completely throw me off here. But uh, regardless, I was agreeing with you, and I was just saying that, you know, for all those years of, uh, you know, the MPLS disruption and showing, you know, a different way of doing it, providing Ethernet around the world, and then you guys added the security in uh, one of the top security companies as well, which I know, you know, Shlomo is going to talk about as well. Uh, but, you know, I believe that with the coupling of MPLS and the SD-WAN, the global nature of your backbone in the security portfolio, I mean, yesterday, uh, who I think one of the, the top technical people in the industry, Ray, Ray Watson, yesterday from Acergy, uh showed us the ability for you guys to identify shadow IT right now uh, by deploying uh, this for free uh, across your organization. Can you touch a little bit about, about that? Because that was mind-blowing to us and uh, I believe it would probably be a big eye opener to everybody on here. Yeah, and and I, I come back maybe in, in the broader category of just security and the SD WAN conversation. We heard it already mentioned that you don't have one without the other. And what we're seeing within these enterprises, if you go back a handful of years with CISOs, CIOs, and, and head of network, I would say there was probably some contention. And when we look at that security footprint within an enterprise today, there is a lot of best of breed implementations, and there's been a lot of great work that's been done with that. Um, but there's a realization that there's a lot of cost that's driving that best of breed management integration, getting of that to a single pane of glass. And so as part of that SD ramp conversation, you know, right at the front of that security and the, the, the CISO with the head of network, you know, there really is a partnership to better understand okay, how can that SD WAN offering with a broader security offering better secure the enterprise. And what we're seeing is, is with the right types of offering and partnerships with that SD WAN offer, that you're actually displacing quite a bit of that, that best of breed um, infrastructure that was previously established. And so we're seeing then you know, improvements and cost improvements and savings by that displacement. Now, it's not just enough to have that, that SD-WAN capability. You need to have the NOC, the SOC. You have to have you know, threat management end-to-end -end, uh, to really have a robust discussion. And clearly, with MACERG, we have that, that capability. And when we think through our roadmap and technologies that we've landed uh, in market already, first with the AI ops, where we're really working through all of the data flows we get from our customers and being able to identify proactively with machine learning what actions they can take to drive optimization within their, their network. At, the at this point in time, it's you know, awareness, and as we roll forward, the autonomous networking where we take those actions on behalf of our clients. This other point that we put to market uh, just uh, this quarter is Shadow IT, where we're going out and really being able to discover all of the applications that are running, SaaS applications, and that you can then take action at a user level of what the policies and the profiles that you want to have within your enterprise to ever allow access or not to allow access, you know, down at a site level. And again, this comes all out of the box uh, with our offering as well. So the, the meta point yeah. there, security is a core part of it, uh, but it needs to be end to end and holistic. And then you really have a rich set of discussions and starting to display some of that best of breed and historical implementation. Yeah, I mean, I, I was blown away yesterday. I, I literally, when we were w showing the demos to, uh, of, you know, the, the potential threats and the potential shadow IT, to be able to deploy uh, SD-WAN across your network, even if it's a handful of your core sites before you deploy the whole thing, right, to be able to see that shadow IT that is existing, to see that threat level. I, I love this panel today because, in my personal opinion, I've been saying this for a long time, SD-WAN wasn't going to take off until security was a, top of mind focus on it. And I believe in the beginning uh, it wasn't. It was about simplicity and we're going to save you a ton of money. And it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to networking. And, you know, that's just not the case, right? Um, right. It was complex. Uh, it does solve all the problems. It does make layer seven dance. But now we have a group here today that their primary focus is around security. And it's on everybody's mind. And our state of disruption report uh, I love this slide. I mean, not not saying I love it because it's a scary world out there, but it is. But uh, it's a fact. You know, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. You will be breached. And you know, the t traditional days of slapping firewalls in there 
which uh, Shlomo, I usually say, you know, just throwing in a checkpoint at some point in time, no pun intended, uh, has changed. And I think, you know, as, as, since you founded Checkpoint, you can talk a little bit about that too um, and why you founded Cato. But, um, you know, this is, a, this is a crazy statistic. I mean, listen, you know, the billion-dollar companies, 82% are fearful of losing their jobs. And what I say to every IT staff that I get in front of today is, you know, get an army. You have the ability right now to have an army behind you uh, and do things in a different way than you ever have, right? Traditional based firewall and the traditional based way of just buying security, uh, it's just kind of over. It's about having these unusual suspects now on your team that allow you to do things that you were never able to do before. And I think that's the key here uh, when we start talking about SD-WAN. And I, I'd be curious, Shlomo, if you want to uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, but if you would agree with me, and I know I think you do, uh, I think it's based heavily on your company, so. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, uh, uh, I fully agree with you, and that actually touches on the point I wanted to start with, and that's le less on the solution and more on the customer, uh, uh, on the customer problem. And the customer problem is a one transformation a project and a one transformation of the journey that perhaps starts with SD1 as a placement to MPLS, it definitely doesn't end there, right? We actually published today a report that says an organization that just replaced MPLS with SD1, facing the digital transformation, completely lost uh, uh, their trust uh, in their network because digital transformation requires many more steps in this journey than just SD1 replacing uh, MPLS. And uh, stay on the previous uh, slide, and we'll talk a little bit about that. It can be uh, going global, and you need definitely an, uh, an SLA-based uh, uh, network for that, secure internet access from every location. So really uh, extend this network. Uh, if you go back one slide, that will be helpful. Extending that network to mobile users and uh, cloud data centers and SaaS applications. And if you think about this one transformation journey piecemeal, you end up with multiple point solution. You end up with SD1 Edge, you end up with cloud security, you, you end up with remote access solution, and you end up with a bundle of these uh, uh, products. And that's actually extremely uh, a bad. Really what we believe is that, and next slide would be great, what you need today is a new architecture. And Gartner agrees with this. Basically, digital transformation render existing network and security models obsolete. Really from both an architectural perspective, from a service perspective, and from a cost perspective, Digital transformation made these historical bundles, I'm going to take all these point solutions, uh, uh, impossible anymore because basically the agility uh, uh, is not there. What you really need uh, uh, to do to have a single one transformation platform, and that's what Cato is, it's a single cloud network that provides convergence of SD1 capability with network security capability, with remote access uh, capability, and a global backbone into a single platform that can go uh, through throughout this uh, journey of uh, one transformation. And, that, and actually, we've been doing this for more than five years now, and it's been very rewarding to see Gartner, actually the two leading analysts in Gartner half a year ago, completely agreeing with this version and defining a new category called SASI that is the convergence of SD-1 in network security as a cloud uh, uh, service and saying this is the transformational category that is going to completely overhaul of networking and network security. So how did we do that? If we move to the next slide, we built a global network of Pops. We've got today more than 50 pops. We are building four more pops every quarter, interconnected with tier one uh, carrier links. Each one of these pops runs our converged network and network security stack. 
and we provide an ability to on-ramp to this network using our own SD1 device, a mobile client, a clientless mobile, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, the reality is that we are both an SD1 uh, a provider, but we are much more than that. We are a partner for our customers throughout the uh, uh, one transformation uh, project. We have a full uh, security stack. We come from a, a, a heavy security background. So everything that you are looking for in a Palo Alto network or Checkpoint or Fortinet, all of that globally distributed firewall. So it's very, very easy to define in a single place all the policy and get the full security stack. And we wrap all these uh, capability with managed, uh, uh, with managed product. So we allow our customers flexibility uh, to the management uh, model, either self-service or co-managed, uh, fully managed service with uh, our uh, expertise, both on the SD1 side, as well as uh, on the security. You know, uh, when you think of SASE and its simplicity too, and, and it's only going to build from a buzzword perspective, and I know you guys are excited about that because you kind of believe you've been doing SASE since day one. Uh, it's the simplicity though, right? That's what it's really about. It's that simplicity, and that's crucial, and I know you guys say this a lot around digital transformation. Can you kind of explain a little bit of why? Right, so, so the simplicity is actually at the core of what digital transformation is requiring. Right, if you want to deploy rapidly application and make them available to your employees and your partner. If you want to uh, set up new sites and tear them down uh, very rapidly, you need to move bandwidth from one place uh, to another. If you want now to make your own changes versus rely on a trouble ticket-based system of the old telco world, we allow simplicity and agility throughout our architecture, throughout our uh, service model, and throughout our uh, uh, value to cost uh, model. You know, one of the things that I always found, you know, talking to your Cato team, and I think Ariaka can say the same thing for, for relatively, uh, you're about what, 15 milliseconds from every eyeball on earth? Is that, is that am I oh, close to saying? We, we, are, we are very close to, uh, to every, uh, every center around the world. I just think that's super interesting for people to understand, especially when they start to think about plugging into layer seven uh, and, and all of those different applications. I'm sorry, go ahead. We, we, we are a software company, so we are able to add four more pops. We are today 50 something pops. In a couple of years, we're going to be over 100 pops around the world. There's no other network like us, like Cato Network uh, in the world in terms of pop. You know, I think you guys would all get a kick out of this, and I think our audience would as well. But um, when I grew up in this industry, working for a carrier, it was all about, we own the backbone. It's our backbone. They're using somebody else's backbone. They're hopping on to someone else's network or what have you. And that was never really that cool, right? Customers were like, oh, well, you know, you own your own backbone. That's got to be a good thing. Today, it's, it's interesting, right? To a degree, none of you really own the actual backbones under the, under the ground. And, and you're not trenching under the water, right? Uh, and all of you do it differently, you know, versus powering some of these providers and Matergy and Ariaka and Cato. You're buying the best routes on the planet, and you're buying multiple of the best routes, and that's the cool thing now, and this the flexibility. Right? That's, that's all about the software, not about the industry. Yeah, it's like that whole, those days of talking about the, the actual pipe under the ground are kind of over, right? It's about the software and, and providing, uh, you know, the best experience at layer seven. And I think that's the key here. So um, we got a lot of questions, um, a lot. So uh, we're kind of moving on, uh, but I'm going to just kind of give a couple key takeaways with a minute and 20 seconds we have left, and then we'll bleed in. Uh, if anybody want to hang out and, and continue to keep asking questions. But the key takeaways today, um, SD-WAN is about layer seven. That's it. It's about moving the applications in the best possible way. It's also about the, you know, the security aspect now, the simplicity, the visibility. Uh, SD-WAN is disruptive, but it doesn't have to be. This can be the greatest transition tool we've ever seen in history. 
you know, when I was selling MPLS a long time ago, it wasn't like, you know, we could come in and take 10 sites. We'd have to rip and replace the whole thing today, you know, and I want to point this out. It's a very important thing for everybody listening from an audience perspective. You know, when a carrier sold you your MPLS network, for all in due part, you know, and I think James, you would agree with me on this as well, um, you know, they had the majority of the control. They really did until that contract came up. When SD-WAN gets deployed by an IT staff, you have the control. You have the ability to pick your providers. You have the ability to make your choices. You have the ability to do things you've never been able to do in the past. So I love talking about SD-WAN as the greatest tool to give the momentum and power back to the IT staff. And yes, we've been talking a little bit about managed services and all of that, but SD-WAN is way easier than anything else that's out there. It's just not plug and play. Uh, and I think that all of you here, and there was a great question, you know, from somebody, uh, it seems kind of siloed, and it's absolutely not siloed. Every single one uh, of these players here today will come in and help build a robust network for you and show you the vision, allow you to test it, allow you to try it, and show you what's working. Um, and I think that's why, you know, quite frankly, it's the golden era of the trusted advisor. And, and, and this is it, right? It's a box of chocolates. There is a bazillion players out there. Uh, and they do all kinds of different things. You've got standalone, like you've got, you know, uh, some of our players here today, like Versa. You've got carrier grade, right? And they do it differently. Uh, and you've got the MSP as well. And so there's tons of choices and there's tons of different types, right? You've got the standalone carrier and MSP giving you a little bit of a, a detail around each and every one. Uh, and that is why, in our opinion, uh, today the trusted advisor is best equipped uh, through a platform like us to help you bring all of these players and more uh, so that when your telco contracts, when you have, you know, geography constraints and application constraints and management constraints, you're concerned about security and you want to continue to keep adding uh, links and capacity. It's SD-WAN all day. So um, this is something that we're very, very ambitious about helping uh, the end customers understand what's out there. And through our State of Disruption Report, 82% of the CIOs responded say they will be using a trusted advisor to help them uh, when it comes to picking one of these great providers. So I'm going to get to some questions. If anyone wants to hang around, we still have a huge group on here uh, today. Um, uh, but I'm going to kind of wrap up real quick. The next, if you like today, uh, the next the State of Security, uh, that will be on Wednesday, March 18th, uh, right after our uh, 612 report gets released on uh, cybersecurity. And if you like today, uh, you'll love that as well. Uh, that will be, again, another unusual suspects and some of the top CEOs from each of those particular providers that we'll be bringing. Um, so, you know, first up, I, I got a couple things I want to um, hit on. You know, AWS Transit Getaway uh, just launched integrated SD-WAN, effectively creating Cloud WAN. There's an option that makes SD-WAN obsolete. Would this panel agree or disagree? Well, for me, I think uh, I sort of uh, disagree, uh, partly because uh, we already support AWS Transit Gateway. Uh, they basically provide you the backbone uh, to probably compete uh, with the other folks who are on the panel. Uh, however, the visibility is not there for end-to-end -end as to what the application is doing, what is going on in the backbone. Uh, plus, uh, you know, really AWS doesn't uh, have the relationship to uh, talk to the, uh, the retail customers. So essentially what they are saying is USD-WAN provides a USD-WAN Vendors can bring your uh, traffic to us, and then we'll take over from there. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. I would, I would echo that 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 statement. And the other piece I'd add is there's, there's not just going to be one. So you have AWS Transit Gateway, um, Azure has has their offering, Equinix, and you can go down the list. And what you would what I would call out is, you know, they all they all have backbones, and those backbones need and can be leveraged. And there's going to be a need to how do you manage in a multi-cloud environment with multiple backbones to be able to deliver then that end customer application service that we've been talking about. And so in that context, the complexity factor is going up, not down. And it's going to be the providers like Encoin can work across all of those environments for an enterprise customer to manage that service. And so if there is going to be the need to have our instance in, in, in the Azure cloud, in uh, the uh, Google cloud, et cetera but then still be able to manage it. 
And so I, I don't see this going away. I actually see the complexity factor going up. I agree. I, I think that the AWS is, is primarily going to be used between uh, data centers in AWS, mm -hmm. but between clouds, physical locations, mobile users, SaaS applications, you would need uh, 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 something additional. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think people really understand uh, how, you know, to James's point too, from a complexity going up, how simple you all make it from a visibility, from a deployment, from multi-layer seven applications. I mean, obviously AWS is thinking about AWS, let's be honest. I mean, that's, that's just a fact, right? And guess what? They're not going to eat the world. Yes, they are growing by nature, but you've got things like now, it's an API economy. And I think we would all agree, it's an absolute API economy. And the things that you're buying and the SaaS you're buying is coming from all over the world and all different types of data centers. And having providers like you with the visibility and the security wrapped around it, just seems completely different. All right, what about a single site looking to virtualize public internet? Does anyone want to comment on that? I know we get that a lot. Really only you, right, Kumar, that can really technically do the, the, the single yes. site? Uh, yes, exactly. And I don't know right. if there's really the benefit yeah, to it. We do it already. I was going to say we do it already. So, yes, I mean, there is... Uh, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's just that if you get customers with single site uh, only, then you know, just the customer uh, support load increases. You know, with all this, uh, you know, the relationship increases. So clearly, uh, that is uh, not the uh, you know that is not the type of customers uh, uh, which are most uh, attractive to us. But yeah, sure, we support that uh, that uh, particular deployment scenario. Yeah, and through, you know, through Avant and your trusted advisor, we have tons of single site type solutions. I would say the majority of uh, here on this particular panel, you're looking at, uh, you know, multi-site um, and, and even global in nature, so as being their key strengths here. Um, you know, one quick question, too, uh, for Cato and Ariaka. Do you really believe MPLS is dead? <laughs> <laughs> I, w I would say that, you know, when, when we started this five years ago, the, the main uh, conversation was MPLS augmentation, and that's still a conversation in various uh, uh, parts of the market, but I would say that five years uh, later, we are definitely seeing MPLS replacement has much more velocity than, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, people have thought. But again, uh, the main message here is that this one transformation is not only about MPLS replacement. It's much more than that. It's about mobile users, cloud data centers, peering with SaaS applications. It's about answering the challenges of digital transformation. And, and you know, yes, MPLS is part of it, and it, it has a lot of uh, velocity in replacement. You know, I would add, though, I would agree with Shomo there as well, but if you put yourself in the shoes of a CIO, um, it's a very complex issue, right? To go in and say, you're gonna replace this embedded network. Um, you don't see a lot of that happening um, as much. What you end up seeing is more hybrid. Can, you, can we still use our existing network and add to it this SD, SD-WAN um, layer? So what I think will happen through, I don't think MPLS is a growth, is a growth category um, I think it will die a slow death, but I think part of that slow death is the, 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 the cost, the complexity, um, the, 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 the concerns that a lot of CIOs have and just coming in and replacing a network and putting a whole new one in. I think there'll be a gradual um, migration from their existing network over to a completely new network, but not a complete replace. Um, and, the, and the best part, Matt, is they can do that with you. I mean, make, make sure everybody that, that there's still hundreds of people on here. I, I want you to know, uh, and this predates me, right? But I don't care if it's, and Kumar will laugh, I don't care if it's X.25, if it's Frame Relay, if it's ATM, if it's ISDN, if it's MPLS, if it's Internet, if it's mobile, uh, we all can work with it. And I think that's the key here, uh, you know, from an SD-WAN perspective. And, and just, well, I'll add a little bit to that question too. We address the global MPLS market somewhere close to about 53, $57 billion a year uh, globally from a carrier perspective. And let's say SD-WAN does 2 billion 
uh, collectively this year will erode that business between anywhere between 10 to 20 billion. So yes, it'll slowly die, but slow deaths aren't the same, are they, Matt, anymore? Uh, slow deaths are in a matter of months as opposed to sometimes as a matter of years, right? Um, uh, I'd like to end with this, and I'll start uh, from left to right here, uh, if we could. We'll start with Shlomo, 30 seconds, then James, then Bob, then Matt, then Kumar. Predict the future in 30 seconds of SD-WAN in the next 24 months. I think in one word, Sassi. Uh, I think that uh, uh, our partner got it exactly right. And SD-WAN is going to converge with uh, access, network access, not SDP, uh, re uh, remote, uh, remote VPN, with, with the entire security stack, and become kind of a new category. And a, a year to year from now, we are going to have a panel about SASE, not only about uh, SD1. James? Yeah, Drew, I, I think just the, the adoption curve is only going to accelerate. When I, you, you turn that corner a little bit more, and there's going to be a redefinition of SD-WAN in the context of what the new edge is in the context of cloud and in the context of connectivity and automation. And that's all going to get wrapped up with, with a rich, very rich layer of analytics and machine learning that's going to drive towards autonomous networks. This is really just the start of a broader wave of change that's going to come over the next, I would say, three to five years. Bob? Uh, 24 months, SD-WAN is mainstream. We'll be talking about software-defined networking, of which SD-WAN is kind of the predominant application. Uh, we'll all be talking about IP pipes supporting SD-WAN and software-defined networking. And we'll be having a, a webinar like this on virtualization of other functions and what and you know the six or seven other functions beyond SD-WAN and beyond security that we're going to virtualize and offer. Matt? Well, I can't disagree with anything that's been said. I totally agree. I think when all is said and done in the next 24 months and what we see is SASE that there will be a convergence of SD-WAN and security, and it will create a new sort of definition um, and category. And so we believe the world is moving towards this convergence of security and um, SD-WAN and some of the other um, elements that James mentioned as well, and creating kind of a new sort of technology stack um, in the market. Kumar? Yeah, we see uh, a few things uh, coming in the future. First is we see more predictive networking using machine learning as well as uh, artificial intelligence constructs. Uh, we see uh, van transformation learnings being pushed further into the land. Uh, we also see SASE uh, definitely uh, uh, giving unified policy whether the user is on-premise or off. And also we see uh, natural language processing to improve human interaction. Uh, and lastly, you know, deliver uh, you know, reliable and resilient mobile access where the, uh, and unified policy and management for the remote user. All of that uh, we see uh, coming in the near future. What I see is change and change and change and change and change again. Uh, it is going to move at a, a rapid rate like we've never seen in history, and that's why I say it's the golden era of the trusted advisors. So to all of the trusted advisors out there today who invited literally over a 1,000 uh, plus people today to our call, I thank you, and to all of the CIOs and decision makers uh, that listened today, I appreciate it so very much. Uh, we're here in the Chicago Battle Lab. We welcome you here to see all of these providers, to hear from all of them, to go through the process that we can have uh, make you the right decision. So on behalf of Avant and all of the trusted advisors and my unbelievable panel, thank you so very much today for this. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Drew, for inviting us. Thank you. Cheers.